Welcome to Explained by Michael. Today we're going to be looking at Average versus expected value. Now, these two are commonly interchanged in a lot of intro stats classes, but there's a very fundamental difference. The main takeaway we want to get from today is that average is just a special scenario of expected value in which all the probabilities are equal. The prerequisite knowledge today is just a basic understanding or one week of a probability class. We don't need to know anything about random variables or statistics at this point, but a good understanding of what value is and thinking about mean, median, mode will be helpful for today. Now, we care about the difference between these two because average is often misused. It can be used to skew statistics in things like lottery where the average number of winnings per person might be more than a lottery ticket, but the expected value of any one lottery ticket is actually less than its cost. It explains why people will gamble on a lottery ticket, but not on the stock market. Now, let's get into a little bit of the math behind it. The formula for average is as this. Where we use x bar when we're talking about a discrete sample, and mu to represent the average of a population as a whole. And this is a formula that you're probably very familiar with. It's the sum of all of our values divided by the number of values we have. Now let's look at expected value. Let's break this down. This is called the expectation of x. x is our random variable. You don't need to know about that. But it's the same x that we represent up here. Now, it's the summation beginning at n equals 1 and going until some number n of our value times the probability of that value occurring. Let's look at an example of students who scored a certain value on their tests. Now let's calculate our average. Again, this is something you should be pretty familiar with. Let's look at expected value now. The x values of this part are easy to think of. We know that the x represents the value itself, which will be these four numbers. Now the probability of x in this scenario is if we put each one of these numbers on a piece of paper and throw it into a bag and I reached in and randomly picked one out, I would have a one in four chance of picking one of these. There's four of them and I have an equal probability of pulling each one. So we know that the probability of a given x is one fourth. Now, I hope the gears are turning. Let's take both of these formulas and do a little bit of math, a little bit of factoring, and check out what we get. And we see we get the same number. What we did here is pour, pull the one quarter out from the bottom and bring it out front. Similarly, here, we factored out a one quarter from each of our terms and pulled it out front. And we see that these two values are equal. Now, remember, there is an equal probability of pulling each one of these values. And that's why expected value is equal to average. Let's look at an example now where the expected value is not equal to the average. It's a little bit more interesting. If you've seen some of my other videos before, you know I like to look at the example of rolling one die. Normally, a normal die would have this distribution.
we have a 1 in 6 chance of rolling any of these values. The average for this is fairly easy to calculate. We could almost do it in our heads. The sum of our values divided by the total number of values we have. So the average value, if I rolled a thousand dice, would be a 3.5. And this is pretty easy to see on something like Excel. Now, what if we transform this so that it was not an equal die? In other words, a five and a six were more likely to land than a one, two, three, or four. I increased this from a 1 in 6 to a 1 in 5 chance and subsequently lowered the remaining. Now let's look at how this will affect our expected value. We see in this weighted die that our weighted average, this is another word to describe the expected value, our weighted average is higher because I'm more likely to roll a five or a six. So this skews my statistic, it skews my distribution, if you will, toward a higher value compared to 3.5. Now, let's look at a real world example that is a little bit outside of probability, but the weighted average still applies. I'm gonna set up a scenario where I work two different jobs that earn two different incomes with two different hours worked per week, and I wanna measure the money that I earn in a given week. Now let's explore the fallacy if we use the average salary I made times the number of hours per week. So if I took the average amount I made in my jobs multiplied by the number of hours I work, I'd make 387. Let's check if this is true or not. For those of you following along, I made two math mistakes. And we see that the outcomes of these two are not equal. We didn't get the same result. Which one's correct? Well, because we're not working the same amount of hours per week, we can't treat it as if it's an equal probability. We have to do our weighted average. The main takeaway from today is The average will equal the expected value if and only if all of the x's have an equal probability of occurring. This concept is used by banks when they do a time integrated average or a daily average balance. They don't just look at all of the balances as if they're equal weight. You can have $500 in your bank account for 29 out of 30 days and then have zero. That doesn't mean that your average amount will be $250. This channel, again, exists to help you learn statistics and other concepts 
at a conceptual and fundamental level rather than just learning how to plug in the numbers. To see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you're interested in seeing. I want to know what you're learning in class, what you're struggling on, so that I can tailor some videos and see where y'all are at.